Uh, hello, uh, I'm Paul Giamatti, and I am a professional entertainer, and I'm here in the Criterion Closet, and I'm just gonna dive in and start looking around. It's genuinely an embarrassment of riches, and I see right off the bat that something that I love very much, which is the movie Carnival of Souls. Uh, I love this movie. It's the first movie I ever remember seeing when I was four years old. I was left uh, on my own with a babysitter. My entire family, my parents and brother and sister abandoned me. I was with a babysitter who thought it was a good idea for us to watch this on the local New York affiliate WPIX Chiller Theater. And um, I went through an entire bag of Tootsie Pops while I watched this at four years old, which probably only jacked me up all the more and made it even more exciting. But it scared the crap out of me. And I think I didn't sleep for maybe a year. It was probably only a few days, but it felt like a year. And my parents never hired that babysitter again. But it was an amazing experience. And it's, a, it's an amazing movie. I see another wonderful movie here that I love very much. The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp. It has a wonderful actor in it that I love very much named Anton Walbrook who I don't think did a whole lot of movies, but he's great in this movie. And this has an incredible sequence in the middle of it that I love very much, uh, where uh, this British soldier is challenged to a duel by a German soldier. And this is a great sequence that builds up to this wonderful duel. It's a very funny movie. It's a very moving movie. It's a big, expansive sort of uh, uh, epic movie, a kind of British history from sort of the beginning of the 19th century for the Second World War. But I love that dueling. Rashomon. It's the only movie that makes me cry when I see it. It's, you know, hard to make me cry. It's like blood from a stone with me. But this movie, for some reason, at the end, the very sort of poetic ending comes out of nowhere. And it's a really beautiful movie. And uh, the end of it always gets me. I guess I, this is, this is always a thing that I love. Solaris. I'm a great admirer of the uh, guy who wrote the book it's based on, Stanislaw Lem, a Polish science fiction writer, and I'd been wanting to see this movie because I'd heard it existed. In the early 90s, I found a copy of it in a, in a video store out in Seattle and watched it, and um, it bored the hell out of me. I didn't know what the hell I was watching, and it blew my mind. There's like a 10-minute sequence of just driving in this movie through the window. And over the years, though, I revisited it and came to love it very much. Love all of his movies. But I like this one in particular. And there's fantastic, fantastic sort of production design of kind of a crappy spaceship that they all live on. I often wonder if I, how I feel about the very final shot of this movie, which I won't give away. But I sometimes feel like maybe it, uh, maybe it wasn't necessary, the final shot of that movie. If Andrei Tarkovsky were around, I would question him. Ah, it's way up there. Watch this. There's a little action sequence in the closet for us. I love these movies. I'm a big fan of these Val Luton horror movies. Cat people. Um, remember the sequel to it. He was a producer. This guy Val Luton made this series of movies. Um, I don't know, six of them, seven of them, something like that. Boris Karloff was in some of them. But I love these movies because they're very low budget and they're this amazing example of doing all this extraordinary stuff with absolutely nothing and creating these incredibly scary effects in them. Uh, they all have these gripping, great, almost kind of iconic moments, all these movies that he produced, of sort of classic horror moments. And uh, they're strange, too. They're all sort of on these sets it all feels very sort of unreal and dreamlike these movies this one in particular it's really a it's really a great great movie where did seconds go ah yeah this is also one of my favorite movies i'm a big fan of frankenheimer's movies the manchurian candidate and uh, seven days in may and the train and this movie I remember seeing the first time I ever saw it. I might have been chemically altered when I saw this movie, so I can't really speak to whether I saw it, you know, really uh, as one should be seeing it, but it made the hugest impression on me. But one of the things I really love about this movie is it's one of the greatest examples of what 
a terrific actor can do in a small, tiny supporting part. There's an actor named Murray Hamilton in it who played the uh, mayor in Jaws. And he appears in the end of this movie for two minutes, maybe, not even, and he barely speaks. And it's one of my favorite performances in any movie. He's incredible in this movie. And it's such a fine example of what a great actor can do in a tiny part. This is the movie that I think, for better or worse, kind of really pushed me over the edge and made me go, I want to be an actor. Um, everything about it, it's such a, it, this is kind of a perfect movie, actually. And um, I saw it recently again, I hadn't seen it in ages. And, I, and one of the things that surprised me about it, maybe, I've maybe only seen it, a few times since I first saw it. One of the things that surprised me was I thought, oh, it, it actually has a real story to it. I'd never paid attention to the fact that it has this kind of very great, simple, kind of noir story to it. I'd never paid it that much attention to the story because I get so caught up in, in all the wonderful detail and, and the wonderful acting in it. And it's got probably my, if I, if you held a gun to my head and said, what's your favorite performance in any movie? I would say Dennis Hopper is Frank Booth in this movie. Uh, he achieves something just off the charts amazing. But I mean, everybody's great. And Kyle McLaughlin's great. In it. I keep talking a lot about the acting in movies and, you know, acting's not the only thing that floats a movie along, but it's, this is like, This is interesting. Uh, this woman, Larissa Shapitko. I've only seen this movie, Wings, but Wings is an amazing movie. It's a beautiful movie. And this fantastic actress in it plays a kind of Soviet hero of the, of the sort of Air Force, Soviet Air Force. And so her life is kind of dreary and she has this sort of fraught relationship with her daughter. It's one of these things I don't even understand how she, how she got this made in the Soviet Union because it seems sort of critical in some ways about, uh, about but she, there's incredible sort of poetry in it. There's all this great way she uses the flying in it and stuff to talk about this woman's interior life and it's really a beautiful movie but I've never seen the other movie she made. I guess now's my time. Now's my opportunity. This is ridiculous. This is too many. This is too many. And this was very kind of the Criterion people to allow me in here uh, to indulge myself. So thanks a lot.